Hi, my name is Pamela Weiss, and I'd like to thank the Spondylitis Association of America for the uh, opportunity to speak to you today for a few minutes to update you on the COVID-19 vaccination in juvenile spinal arthritis. Um, as I said, my name is Pamela Weiss. I'm an attending physician and rheumatologist at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. I'm also associate professor of pediatrics and epidemiology at the University of Pennsylvania. I also have the distinct pleasure of serving as the chair of the medical and scientific advisory board for the SAA. And I'd also like to announce to you, if you don't know already, that July is Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month. So I first wanted to start out with a little bit of background, which I think most of you probably already know, but the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus caused a global pandemic and has really flipped um, most of our lives upside down for the past year or so. The virus has caused substantial morbidity and mortality in adults, but it also has had sub substantial impact on children, not so much with the severity of the viral infections, but really the effects of the virus on all of our children's loved ones, as well as the isolation that it's caused in the school, the being away from friends, not having sports. I'm sure that you all have various ways in terms of the way this virus has affected your children. As many of you know, vaccinations for the SARS-CoV-2 virus were approved for emergency use in adults in late 2020, but only for those who were 16 years of age or older. Vaccines were approved for emergency use in mid-May for adolescents who were ages 12 to 16. Shown here are my own children um, for the distinct purpose of just trying to introduce you guys to, to the vaccine. I will tell you also that I myself have spinal arthritis. I take a TNF inhibitor chronically and I received the COVID vaccination. Um, my older daughter is 12 years old. She does not have spinal arthritis, but she was vaccinated. And um, then also is my younger daughter. She is nine year old and she really wants to be vaccinated. Um, the reasons my children wanted to be vaccinated, their number one reason was to get back to freedom and to be able to be um, around their friends without fear of um, getting infected themselves and then passing the infection on to um, our, our own loved ones. So some facts for you about the COVID-19 vaccine. So the, Fi the Pfizer vaccine is the only version currently approved for use in children 12 to 16 years old. I will also tell you that Pfizer plans to request for emergency approval in children's five to 11 in early fall, 2021. Side effects of the vaccine thus far in the adolescents um, are generally comparable to what we have seen in adults in that they're generally mild and very self-limited with the most common side effects being a sore arm, a low grade fever, mild flu-like symptoms, um, many of you have also may heard some rare reports of myositis. Um, there's no causative link that's been shown so far. And again, these, this is to the tune of like 12 per million in terms of, um, in terms of the incidence. So extremely, extremely rare. Um, and I will say also that the vaccines, even though they have rare side effects, are extremely effective at reducing severe infections and hospitalizations in those who do get infected with COVID. Um, I need to disclose to you that there are no official guidance um, from the American College of Rheumatology regarding COVID-19 vaccination for children with rheumatic disease. There is, however, official guidance for adults with rheumatic disease, including those with spinal arthritis. This is primarily based on indirect evidence and expert opinion. Um, there is also no direct evidence about the mRNA vaccine safety and efficacy in patients with rheumatic disease. Um, for instance, we don't yet know about the durability of the vaccine or the effects in emerging viral strain variants, but this also stands true for um, general healthy adults who get vaccinated. Considerations for our population in particular are that autoimmune rheumatic disease patients, and, and this I'm speaking to mostly the data that's come out in adults, are at higher risk for viral infections compared to the general healthy population. Adults are also at higher risk for hospitalization from COVID-19 than the general population. I will add that we, um, we have not really seen hospitalizations for COVID-19 in our pediatric rheumatic population. Um, adults with rheumatic disease may have a worse outcome from COVID-19 infection compared to the general population. And this really varies by underlying disease and medication. Beyond a known allergy to vaccine components, however, there are no known contraindications to the COVID-19 vaccine. In patients with rheumatic disease, including spinal arthritis, there's also no plausible reason to an anticipate that the vaccine harms would, um, 
by it would even come close um, to the amount of benefit that could be had by having these vaccines. Um, we do. Um, we don't know, again, what the efficacy of the vaccine is in our patients with spinal arthritis who may be um, on systemic uh, immunosuppressants. And it may be that response to the vaccine is blunted in both magnitude and durability in comparison to um, children and adolescents who might be vaccinated who don't have this condition and are not medications. Um, however, a blunted response is still better than no response. Um, vaccination, according to the American College of Rheumatology, should occur in the setting of well-controlled disease. So if your child is in the middle of um, uncontrolled disease or a disease flare, it's probably not the ideal time to seek vaccination. Um, one, of the one of the questions that I have gotten in clinic um, that I think is important to address up front too is whether, since we don't know if the response to vaccine is blunted, should my child have um, laboratory testing to see if they develop immunity after vaccination. And this is not recommended at all. Um, so uh, if you ask your provider about this, the, the answer is probably going to be no, we don't need to test that. Um, we still think, um, in, in addition to vaccinating um, our patients, a vaccination of household and close contacts is also very important. And even after patients are vaccinated, it's still very important to follow CDC and public health guidelines regarding social distancing and other preventive measures that are in, in um, place for the general public. Ultimately, the decision whether or not to vaccinate your child with spinal arthritis or not with a COVID-19 vaccine is really um, going to be a very personal decision with shared decision-making between your child, yourself, um, and uh, your rheumatologist. Um, and depending on what medications your child is in, you also need to have a conversation as to whether um, the dose of their medication that week or the week after needs to be skipped. Pediatric specific considerations um, in terms of the COVID-19 uh, vaccine. Um, younger patients in general, um, regardless of their um, underlying condition, then have very mild COVID-19 infections. And as I said to many of my patients in my own clinic, um, we've had many patients with rheumatic disease, both on and off systemic medications who unfortunately have become infected with the COVID-19 infection. And generally they have done very, very well and recovered with, with um, very, very little sequelae. Um, and so the, the, the question that many parents have in terms of vaccinating their children is, so why vaccinate? They're not gonna get very sick. What's the point of getting them vaccinated? So what I will say is the vaccine is safe. The side effects are very mild. Um, and as I said before, a blunted response to the vaccine is better than no response. Um, vaccination of our adolescents will tremendously help to slow the pandemic um, in the general population. It also can serve to uh, protect both your family and friends, especially if they are unable to be vaccinated. And um, especially in regards to children, vaccination helps us to return to normal as a society. Um, and, and what the kids really care about is return to their schools, their sports, and their social gatherings. But as I said, it's a very personal decision. And when I've been talking to my patients about this in clinic, I'm not applying pressure to get the vaccine. But if you ask me if I think it's a good idea, unabashedly, I'm going to say yes. Um, I myself got the vaccine. My two children will get the vaccine. Um, the second one will get it as soon as it's available. Um, and so for that, I want to say thank you. Um, and please stay tuned over the coming months because I think that we'll probably have lots more information to share with you as we learn more about um, the COVID-19 vaccine, especially as it gets rolled out into the younger population.